Hey Air Stairs, welcome back to the channel. I have another interesting scale crawler kit that you guys need to check out. This one is from GMade and it's their new GS02F Buffalo kit. Now this is a fun build up kit if you are the RC scale modeler that loves to build. Now this kit here, when you get it, it is just a box of parts, a big bag of screws and an instruction manual. And it might take you quite some time to build this thing up. I actually built it over a week, just kind of doing some steps here and there. Uh, reason being is there's a lot of screws and different parts to go through, cutoff trees and stuff like that. It's not like the other kits that are out there that kind of bag up each steps. So this one is kind of one of your true builder kits where you have to hunt down all of the parts. And on top of it, these guys use pretty much every piece of hardware I think that they could find in order to put this thing together. Uh, if you ever take it apart, you're going to need the manual handy because there's just so many different screws everywhere, even down to Phillips head screws. There's a lot of hex hardware throughout, but there's even Phillips head screws. So lots to, you know, just keep track of when you're building this kit. And so it, it does take a while, but you know, those true modelers that love to build, I think you're going to really enjoy it because the quality, the fit and finish is all there. It's all top notch. Uh, I really like what I saw while I was building it up. So let's move on to the body of this beast. And uh, this is obviously a Chevrolet style blazer. Uh, it's not licensed, but it does have that look to it. And uh, it's got a pretty cool graphics package in here. These uh, these red stripes came with the body. And actually when I saw the, the red stripes, it uh, immediately brought me back to my days of working at a hobby shop in a hobby town. And there was actually a GMC Sierra Outback, but it had these red stripes. And when I saw that, I was like, I, I gotta paint it similar. And uh, I chose the silver because that, that truck was a silver truck that was parked out back. And, and it kind of, it brought back memories for me. So that's why I chose silver on here. This is a Tamiya silver back to the black. And I think it came out pretty cool. It looks pretty awesome in my book. Uh, but the body, you know, really nice shape to it. It's got a lot of great details. Uh, up front here, we do have some windshield wipers, molded windshield wipers, side mirrors, uh, door handles, fender flares. It's a two-piece fender flare, so it's supported on the inside. I do like that. Up on top here, we've got this utility style roof rack, which is pretty cool. It's a multiple piece rack and uh, even has a light bar built in. It doesn't give you the LEDs, but it does give you the lens, which is pretty cool. Uh, just a, a little bit of warning, the dimples that are on the roof aren't exactly where they need to be. The rear needed to be about another millimeter or so back from where they had it. So I had to elongate the holes. Uh, they do give you a template in the manual. I didn't try that out, but uh, I just went and elongated the holes and uh, was able to fit it up. And you can't really see my mistake there. Uh, up front, we do have a chrome grill with some uh, clear lenses. They do give you pods so you could go and attach LED lights front and rear. Uh, again, you're just gonna have to pick up all the LED lights yourself. While I'm talking about LEDs, you could even put LEDs into the bumper here. They've got lenses already in there. So it's got a really cool custom off-road bumper look to it. And uh, you know, I, I really like the way this thing turned out. There is a bumper on the back as well. Uh, the bumper actually attaches to the body because it's part of the body mounting system. So the body posts actually extend off and go into uh, where the bumper mount is typically uh, on other scale vehicles. That's pretty interesting. So you slide the body in from the back and tilt it down into the front and posts that are attached to the front uh, go and attach to the uh, the bumper itself. You slide your body clips into the bumper. So what's cool is there is no body clips visible from the outside and just adds to the scale factor. So I really like the details they put into this body. I think it turned out pretty awesome. You're gonna have to cut out the body, trim the holes for the, the grill and everything, uh, but they do at least give you some window mass. So that does help out in the process. The only thing is they didn't give you any decal to put behind the grill. I found uh, an old decal in uh, my box of decals to, to kind of put behind here to give it a, a, a blacked out look. But uh, that's the only gripe I had as far as the decal set that was with this. Uh, that would have put everything over the top. All right, let's pop this body off. We could check out the chassis because there are a lot of details to talk about here. All right, so first up, let's start off with the frame itself. It's a steel ladder style frame, uh, you know, twin rails, of course. And what I found pretty interesting is the front is much narrower than the rear. It widens out as you go along. It, there is some flex in the frame. I, I did notice that we, we do have composite plastic cross braces throughout, but there is some flex here. And I know some people have a problem with that. So I did want to mention it. I, on the other hand, I don't really have a problem with it because I just go out trailing for fun and uh, drive the truck as is, learn its traits and, and go from there. 
but I do like the layout and the layout is very simple. Uh, this truck is lightweight. I, I want to just jump to that really quick. It's a really lightweight rig. I mean, I know I have a shorty pack in here, but this thing is light. So if hopefully, you know, people come out with aftermarket brass weights and stuff like that for the axles or something, uh, I, I think it's going to work out really well because you'll be able to put the weight down where you need it. And then the top side of it is lightweight. So you don't have that weight shift that, that could possibly, you know, throw you off when, when you're out there trailing. Uh, so I, I like the setup. I, I like the details throughout this thing. I, I'm probably going to say that a lot because there's, there's little stuff here and there that really says, hey, they really put some time and thought into this rig. All right, so beyond the frame rails, we do have inner fenders. That's really cool. These are a plastic inner fender. It's not a molded Lexan, so I like that. A little bit more value there. Uh, it does have some cross braces to help keep everything steady up top. Then in the uh, center here, we do have molded floor pans. So uh, the, you know you can go mount your speed controller to this side. Uh, obviously, we've got a servo in this side. There is a receiver box over here, and then a battery mount, an adjustable battery mount up front. So what's actually very cool is you can go put a, a standard style battery in, but you could actually go ahead and move all these components around. You could, you could adjust it, you could adjust your weight bias if you want to. So these are some of the details that I like. So uh, if you want to, it looks like you can go ahead and put this battery over here on this uh, floor pan. It does look like the holes match up. Didn't really say it in the instruction manual, but I was kind of, you know, just investigating some things and it does look like that could happen. Or you could go and take the battery mount and put it in the back and move your receiver box over onto the floor pan. So there's things you could do to move stuff around, you know, to best suit the way you want this vehicle set up. All right, now let's start talking about the drivetrain. And uh, as you can see, the motor is mounted up front, so you get more weight over the front wheels. Uh, then it goes over to a transmission with a, a tunnel uh, back to like a transfer case. Uh, basically inside that transfer case is, is the two-speed gears. Uh, but up front, the motor mounting system is pretty unique. It's got some cam style of motor mounting to it. A little bit different, but by removing one screw, you could actually twist the motor and pull it out from the front so you could do motor maintenance or even swap out pinion gears. Uh, so inside, we've got all metal gears throughout and as I mentioned, uh, a two-speed transmission. And that's what the servo is back here for so you could shift on the fly if you want to. And, and I know uh, a lot of people enjoy using that, whether you're a, a bad sure you just need that extra little blip of power when you're out there on, on a course but the quality seems there i mean everything fit together really well the gears actually look really nice uh, and actually everything spins really smooth as well so if you wanted drag brake in your drive line uh, that is not in this kit it's going to have to all be in the speed controller uh, because it it does it spins really smooth almost like a racing vehicle uh, full ball bearings throughout obviously and then let's move on to the the sliders in the center uh, kind of your standard looking slider except for the universal joints really like the way the universal joints are set up uh, the ball side of the universal is really just mated right up to the shaft that goes into the bevel pinion and then um, you know we do have a standard universal towards the back of it but uh, it goes together really well uh, everything is captured in there so that the pin shouldn't fall out and then the axles themselves. So it's actually like a curry style of axle uh, where you've got your, your pumpkin cover on the on top here and the axle itself really smooth on the bottom. So not much to hang up on. Uh, but really good looking axle. Again, you know, inside we've got the metal gears and the uh, the locker in there. There's a locker front and rear. Kind of interesting the way they did that rather than just molding it into the gear. They actually have this separate unit and then a, uh, a composite cap that kind of bolts everything together. Just, I uh, just found it interesting. Maybe it, it's a few more parts than it needs to be, but um, once it's together, everything seems to work fine. We've got some universal axles in the front, and, and again, they're captured. They've got some sleeves that go over them, uh, nice steel axles in the rear, uh, and, and again, ball bearings throughout the, the drive line and the axles, so everything rides nice and smooth, uh, you know, and they're, they're sealed, so you're, you know, a little bit more protected from the elements. Definitely like the drive line on this. I, I think it's pretty cool. I can't wait to try that two-speed transmission. Now let's talk about the suspension on here. So we've got four link in the rear, uh, three link in the front with a pan hard bar, really nice aluminum links. They are pretty easy to install and figure out. Uh, you know, maybe just the, the ball ends themselves, kind of deciphering where they go uh, according to the instruction manual. It might be a little bit of an issue, uh, 
the one thing though I wish they did is put the, some aluminum ball studs in there. That would have been nice or, or some steel ball studs rather. Uh, and then the, the end links themselves, they do feel a little bit soft. So when you're twisting those things on, um, you know, just be careful that you don't twist it and kind of, you know, mangle it. it. It is possible to do that. I did it with one of them. Uh, so just be careful there. But I do like the link setup. The shocks on this, uh, they are an aluminum body shock, oil filled. They even give you a Teflon piston. The springs, however, feel kind of firm, you know, so this thing, you know, doesn't really articulate as well as I thought it should on the workbench. We'll have to see how it does out on the trails, but the shock does feel pretty nice. Took me a little while to bleed them just right, but uh, I got it down after a little bit. The shock shaft on here, pretty thick, and uh, there are two spots on the shock mounts for adjustment if you feel you need to, to lean your shocks down a bit. Um, but uh, there isn't a ton of uh, angle change to that. The links up front for the steering, aluminum as well. The uh, pan hard bar link is steel from what I could tell. So uh, that's nice that the, they put a more sturdy piece there. It is bent so it does clear the axle and uh, there is not a lot of sway and it doesn't seem like there's that much bump steer, if any at all in the front. So that's a bonus you know for those of you that are really worried about that i know some kits out there have way too much bump steer out of the box but this one seems to be pretty on point so uh let's see what else have we not talked about um the truss bracing on the rear for the uh the axle that looks pretty good that, that mates up to the links i do like the axle covers on there i wanted to mention that before i think that's really about it we we haven't talked about the tires the wheels and the tires so a really nice looking tire from g made on here as far as uh, i think it's going to work really well they're really going to grab all sorts of terrain any type of rock yeah even uh smooth rock and stuff these feel really good there is a foam insert that comes with it and then they are on a three-piece beadlock style wheel pretty interesting the way the wheel is usually we have a ring on the inside and then you know the two outer pieces uh, kind of pinch everything together but the ring actually has a center section as well so all three pieces kind of made up together and lock in the tires it, it really seems to work well uh, i haven't been able to pull these tires off we'll see how they work out on the trail uh, running boards does have running boards with the GMA logo on there and I think that's it I think I've covered everything about this new kit again it's gonna take you some time to put it together if you are a builder you're really going to enjoy it I did and uh, now it's just time to see how it crawls so let's head out to the trails and see what this could do
All right, it's time to talk about performance, but before we get into that, I do wanna talk about setup really quick, more specifically the steering. Make sure you set your endpoint adjustments because the steering knuckles and the front axle will steer much more than the universals are capable of, and that will, of course, lead to some chatter and maybe some wear, possible breakage. You, of course, don't want that to happen, so just take a little bit of extra time and set up your endpoint adjustments. All right, with that said, I threw this thing down on the trails, pulled the throttle, and notice this thing is super quiet. That smooth drive line really translates to a quiet drive out there on the trails, and I was pretty impressed by that. But what was even more impressive is when I switched the gears on here, when I went from low to high, this thing just took off. There is a big speed difference. Uh, I think they got the ratios just right on this to make this thing really exciting, but still have the ability to crawl really well. And so while I was you know, just walking along the trail, getting over to where we really wanted to test this thing out, crawling it, it was fun just ripping back and forth on the flat off-road terrain. Pretty cool stuff. But this thing is all about crawling, so I went to and found some rocks and some water to drive this thing through, and I'm pretty impressed with how well this truck handled. It was a really capable setup. I was a little worried with how uh, stiff the suspension is on it, but out there on the trail, it was very manageable. In fact, I, you could push this truck pretty far. I was side hilling it on some rocks and it didn't roll until I you know, really pushed it far just to see how well, uh, you know, how well it would handle uh, the side hilling. But it was pretty impressive on what it was capable of doing. Even with this roof rack on the top, I thought there'd be some extra weight. No, it is very capable. And as far as getting into the inclines, uh, it's pretty impressive on how it crawls. I mean, there isn't a ton of noticeable torque twist. Uh, you know, I was going straight up a lot of the rocks, so it just pulled itself right up and over. And uh, I think they got the setup pretty right on this thing. Uh, I don't know what I would really change. Uh, I would definitely add some weight if possible, but just because I think it will help settle the truck down just a little bit more. I think you can push yourself a, a bit more with it. But uh, you know, I was pretty impressed. The, the approach angle, like with the bumper, uh, I was able to really get into some rock faces and just crawl right up it. Same with the descent, uh, the rear bumper angle, just fine on it. The transmission coupled with the Tekken BXR and the Holmes Hobbies motor, it's just on two cell uh, with the stock 14 tooth pinion gear. It was really manageable, really smooth. It has plenty of steering, whether you're just out there ripping this thing around in the dirt or navigating through rocks. Uh, the underbelly of it is nice and smooth. Nothing really ever got caught up on rocks or anything like that. Uh, it definitely has enough power to blip this up over some gaps. So this thing, it has some great driving traits to it. And I really can't find anything to complain about. I wasn't attacking any insane obstacles out there, more of a trail, scale, crawl type of situation. And, and that, I think it was just perfect for it. I think it's really going to be a blast for people that like that, you know, slow, smooth, crawling type of uh, terrain. So overall, I think GMA did a really good job on the Buffalo. It's a very fun build. It's an extremely capable crawler in a scale type of setting. And overall, it looks really cool. I think a lot of people are gonna have fun driving it, shooting video of it, taking pictures of it. It's a great truck. And, and you could go ahead, throw some lights in here as well. You could even scale it up some more. You know, if I had to maybe find a gripe about the, the kit itself, it would maybe be cool if they included a Lexan interior just to hide some of you know the electronics and stuff like that. But of course, there's some interiors out there that you go fit into this. Um, but uh, you know, it's a very good truck. Hopefully, we see some aftermarket companies kind of take on this truck and, and create some uh, additional parts for it, like you know some brass weights mostly. Uh, but this very cool truck. If you're looking for a great building experience, this is definitely one to consider. What do you think about the GMA Buffalo? Tell me in the comment section below. While you're there, hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell. Throw this video a like. We'll see you back soon for some more RC Driver videos.